Alright, Tina Koto Katoa and welcome to the council meeting for today, Wednesday the 28th of June 2023. I'd like to welcome all councillors, staff, media, members of the public who are here and those who are watching at home or overseas. <laughs> Uh, first, we will start, I'll call for apologies, and I have an apology from the Mayor. Would someone like to move that we receive his apology? Councillor Brahm, seconded, Councillor Hooper. All those in favour, aye. aye. Against, no, carried. Thank you. Um, extraordinary business. Is there anyone that would like, uh, sorry, we do um, have one item. Um, of extraordinary business and that's to approve the inclusion of two elected members on a panel to appoint a new ACL director and this will be taken as a final item, item 25. Can I have someone that would like to, um, that can move that we accept this? Councillor Cameron and Councillor Brahm. All those in favour, aye. Okay, it's not carried, thank you. Um, declarations of interest. Anyone have any declarations of interest on today's agenda? Councillor Ellis. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Under item 19 and public excluded under the community infrastructure grants, um, I'm a member of an organisation that has an application in there, so I will be withdrawing from that. Thank you, and I am, will also declare um, on the same item 19, um, under the Sport New Zealand Travel Fund. I have a, a um, son who would be using one of those services. Councillor Cameron. Um, I, under item number 10, I'm a trustee of the HH WET. So thank, declare conflict then. Thank you. Councillor Lovett. And, and item 19, I'm, I'm a member of one of the groups and receiving funds. But, thank you. Yeah. We don't have to move or second that, that just, no. Thank you. Um, next, we go to confirmation of the minutes from our council meeting on the 7th of June. And we will go to page three. Um, any corrections, I'll just go through. Page four. Page five. And just the top of page six. Can I have someone uh, move that they be taken as read and confirmed? Uh, Councillor Hooper. Councillor Todd. All those in favour, say aye. Against, no. Carried. Thank you. Uh, next we go to the receipt of minutes for the Methman Community Board, which was held on the 12th of June. Someone like to move that we receive the these minutes? Okay. Councillor Lovett. Councillor Todd. All those in favour say aye. aye. Against, no carried. Can we have to get recommendations gone through? Yes. Okay, so there is a recommendation in there, um, and I'll read it, that the Methvin Community Board recommend to Council that a 30-minute parking restriction be introduced for five of the 15 angle parks adjacent to the Super Value Supermarket in Methvin Mall. And it was moved at the Community Board meeting by um, Mr Jenkins, Jenkinson and seconded by Mr Owen. Would someone like to move that, please? Councillor Mackle, seconder. Councillor Todd. All those in favour say aye. aye. Against, no carried. Thank you. Right, next we come to the um, Revenue and Financing Policy, Meth and Springfield Drinking Water, and welcome Richard Maven up. 
and we have a report there which also includes um, the record of the, the hearings and we've got Mark on screen. Thank you. Um, anything you'd like to add, Richard? Other side, yep. There you go. Um, just one thing. Um, we've got two recommendations, and it occurs to me as I was sitting here re refreshing myself on their content that um, you probably actually need to address recommendation two before you address recommendation one. Otherwise, if you adopt recommendation one first, you've effectively decided what you want to do in regard to recommendation two. Recommendation two is in regard to the billing frequency, uh, and that's covered in paragraphs eight and nine of the report. Thank you. Or we can take them both together. Would, would that also work? Or do, or do we need to take them separately? I understand uh, Richard's comments to mean that if you um, adopt one, then two is, is covered by the adoption of one. So you want to, if there's any debate needed or any consideration needed of number two, you need to do that first. Okay, thank you. We'll go to questions first. Any questions on the report? <coughs> Councillor Cameron. On the, um, I'd like to talk about the billing period, which we were sort of silent about when we had our... Um, Day, uh, when we had people in, did we have any feedback from um, the submitters on the frequency of the billing? I don't believe we did. No, I don't think we did either. Am I asking another question? Yes. When I think Spark, uh, Spark staff addressed that on another issue, another occasion, I understood that quarterly billing was easier. Have I got that correct? Uh, yes, you have. How much easier? Significantly. Like, so does that reflect in cost of the quarterly billing? You know, like, would it be two hours worth of staff time versus 20 hours worth of staff time? Uh, I'd, I'd def defer to Leanne about the detail of that answer. Um, the, the question arose initially when we were first putting an annual billing yeah. uh, for the, um, uh, the relevant properties at the time. Mm -hmm. So having done it the first time, subsequent treatment to be consistent with that may not be as... Onerous. Onerous, as it was the first time when we had to create a system to do it. But Leanne might like to answer. Through the Chair, um, I, I think the Chief Exec summed it up reasonably well. Oops. Um, consistency is probably our most important because it then reflects when we get the calls through. But also it helps for us manage um, the, the same process. And the more we're doing consistency, the, the, the cost efficiency is where we gain. OK, so... So that was the opposite of what Hamish just said, essentially. When it was introduced for the um, previous uh, relevant properties, it required a programming change yeah. and a, th and a um, yeah. consideration of what process we should follow. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that had a uh, reasonably um, significant overhead at that time. But having gone through that, uh, I imagine it would simply be a matter of applying that process and that yeah. software change yeah. and that yeah. set of um, work to a new set of properties. So yeah. it wouldn't be as significant the second time that makes I no imagine. Leanne? But my understanding is this is coming through on the main rates invoice, which we invoice at the beginning of the year and then just send out statements quarterly. And I'm just looking to Erin, who um, manages the detail in that. I just want to double check. So through the chair, um, currently we have um, areas that are on quarterly billing, so they're billed in through the watering, water system. The, the meters are read quarterly and the bills are sent out from that reading. And there's other parts that have um, a yearly read, although they are read quarterly as well as my understanding, but um, they're only billed for that yearly and it's to allow those spaces to have the peaks and troughs and consumption. So when are they billed? At the beginning of the year or based on the previous year or at the end of the year and then the washout done? Or So the quarterly ones are billed quarterly, quarterly after the yeah. reading and yeah. then the yearly ones are billed for the year of consumption. So the yearly ones are billed at, are billed at the end of the, the beginning of the fifth quarter, the new year, and yes, then billed again. That is correct. So essentially they're a year in arrears, essentially. Essentially that's right. 
Okay. Be because it will only be at that point that we'll know how much That's they right. consumed. Yeah. Even though they're using quarterly. It would be quite yeah. interesting, as an aside, to get quarterly data so we can see how much the quarters vary. You know, that would be quite interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions on the report? Doesn't look like it. Um, so there is a recommendation on page nine, and I think we will take them together. So anyone? Councillor Brown? If there's no more questions, I'm quite oh, happy to yes. move. You've moved? Yes. Yep. And a seconder, Councillor Ellis? So moved by Councillor Brown, seconded by Councillor Ellis. Debate. Yes. Um, Councillor I'd like Wilson. To, I'd like to speak in support of the, the motion and that I think it makes, it means that all um, people on the district water scheme are treated equally and we, we end up with a stronger, clear, clean water for all people that are on our scheme, equally. Thank you. Any other speakers for right of reply? Councillor Brown? No, I think Richard, Richard did a good uh, word for that. Okay, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Against, no. Carried. Thank you. Next, we have the adoption of, thank you, Erin and Richard. Uh, next, we have the adoption of the annual plan, uh, page number 22, for Emily and Erin up with us. Um, everyone would have read the report. Any questions first? I did have one question. Actually, I've got two questions. Um, No, sorry, mine's on a different one. Any other questions on this? Councillor Todd. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, it's um, just really a comment, really. Uh, it's a huge document, um, and um, I suppose as a newbie around the table, I'd be quite interested to know how many man hours it actually takes to collate a, uh, a document like that. Uh, it, would, it would be possible. Um, we don't have that to hand um, because we don't collate it. There's a lot of people involved, a lot of staff hours uh, um, are required to bring this to you. Um, but we don't, I wouldn't have that number off the top of my head, but it is certainly many hours from many people. Yeah. Councillor Lovett. I'm just going to the stop water charges. I was just reading that. And the, um, Which the uniform, page are you on? Oh, geez, what page in the document? It's page 33. In the document? Yeah. Okay. I actually haven't got it up. I haven't. Um, there's a $260 charge. When we originally talked about it, it was we were sort of looking at the small users at the end of the cha chain to try and encourage them to, um, to find other means of water. And, you know, we've, we've decided to put it right across the board. Like and, go, and I'm just thinking, will, there, will we have backlash in, in the future? Because we've got people at the top of the chain with probably six, eight k's of water races, and they're paying is it 82 cents per is it per metre on top of this. And, and what, I know we're trying to shut these things down, and I think we're really going to have to move that fast because it's it's going to come very expensive for those people that are got k's and k's of water races running past their joint to supply somebody at the bottom end with only a, you know, feeding a few sheep or a couple of horses and, yeah. I'll go to Maybe Tony we need Dow. to look at it long-term oh, plan. We're in the, um, <coughs> okay, so that's in the setting of rates. Tony, did you want to answer that now while, while we're all listening? <clears throat> Thank you. Through the chair, yes, happy to answer now. Um, the, the conversation um, 
is actually relating to a long-term plan type scenario, and that's where we could have the discussion around do we want to fund Stockwater the way in which we've been currently funding it. It pulls out of the revenue and financing policy as well, so this is just giving effect to those policy decisions um, through the long-term plan 21-31, but in the next couple of months we'll better have the conversation around potential changes for the next Thanks. LTP. Thank you. Um, so, any other further questions on the annual plan? Councillor Cameron. No further questions. I would like to move um, the recommendation if there's no further questions. Yeah. That is fine. And Councillor Lovett will second. Any debate? Do you want to speak to the motion, Councillor Cameron? No, I, I think it's a um, reasonable annual plan. I think we've thought about things very carefully. Um, I am looking forward to the long-term plan where we can review um, UAGC, um, general rate, targeted rates and all the rest of it, but at this stage, um, the long-term plan, I'm happy to move. It. The annual plan, yep. The annual plan. Yep. Thank you. Any more speakers for or against? No, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Against, no, carried. Thank you. So next we'll move to the setting of the rates. And that's on page 26. And that's where I had a couple of questions. Um, page 29. Um, under water meters. And I was just questioning... Uh, is it a dollar per 1,000 litres or was it 1.2 litres? Through the Chair, um, you receive 1.2 as an allocation and, and then after that it's a dollar per 1,000 litres, is that Oh, I see. That would be... So it's over and above. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> With the 1.2 plus 1 formula, the, the 1.2 um, cubic metres per day equates to the 438 cubic metres. Uh, on top of that, um, <coughs> people who have an extra SUIP or extra SUIPs get an additional litre per day per SUIP. And uh, over and above that, what passes through their metre is charged at $1 per cubic metre. Thank you. That's answered my question. I do have another question on page 30, um, and it was under solid waste collection rates. And just looking at uh, Rangitata Huts is $3.50 cheaper than the rest. Is that just because it's a standalone service? Uh, that's correct. They do have their own rate in that area. Thank you. Any other questions? No, so we do have a recommendation and um, you will see the full resolution is set out on pages 26 to 33, so obviously that's not included in the, in the recommendation, but it is. That makes sense. Do I have someone that would like to move that recommendation? I'll it's not move it. that. Okay, a seconder. Yeah. Councillor Todd. Any debate? Councillor Wilson. Yeah, I'd like to speak in support of the setting of the rates 23-24. I think it um, reaches a good, recognise the a good balance, recognising the services and benefits the people of our district receive through the UAGC and the complete funding of our DW District Water Group, which provides water to all people who can receive the water. And also, it, it, it's included the million dollars extra for roading, which is trying to bring our roads up to the standard. Our, um, the people of the district desire. Thank you. Any other speakers for or against? Councillor Todd. I uh, also speak in favour, uh, Madam Chair, uh, and really endorse what uh, Councillor Wilson has said. Um, but uh, strike a strike an average rate of 5.99 in these inflationary times is uh, is a good um, uh, good outcome, really. Um, so um, uh, when you consider the the inflationary pressures that are out there, to set it at 5.99 is, um, is uh, good achievement on behalf of, uh, 
everyone, including the staff. Thank you. And I'll, I will also um, speak in support and just like to thank um, the staff for all the work that they have done um, with us and also with the annual plan. We, we didn't get an answer on how many hours are put in, but we know there's a lot and we know it's, um, it's utilising everyone um, and the council staff to get this right. So um, we appreciate all your efforts and I think all the workshops that we have um, had as well so that um, some of the newer councillors have been able to get their head around it. So appreciate it. Okay, we have a mover and a seconder. Um, put the motion, I'm in favour. All those in favour say aye. Against, no, carried. Thank you. you go and celebrate. <laughs> Thank you. Um, our next item is item number nine and transportation and parking bylaw. And we've got Richard back again. And we have two recommendations there. Report starts on page 37. Does anyone have any questions? Councillor Ellis. Thank you. Um, just with what we moved first with the MEF and Community Board and the five 30-minute parking spaces, just checking that that fits okay with what we've got here. I can see I can a nod that. from Jane. Um, Richard? Yeah, the answer is yes, it does. We don't, we don't record the um, parking restrictions in the Register of Resolutions. They're deemed to be um, validated by the placement of the signs in accordance with Council's resolution. Happy with that, thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Councillor Todd. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it's not actually a question, um, but page 58, 16.2, uh, um, just to prove that I've read the whole lot um, now on the first line, that uh, there's no repeat of an offence. It goes an offence, an offence twice. Oh, it does too, yes. 16.2, yep. yes. Yeah. Good pick up, thank you. Any other questions? No. Uh, so we do have the two recommendations there on page 37. Do I have a mover and a seconder? Those. Councillor Brahm. I'm quite happy, I'm quite happy to move it as this. Seconder. Councillor Hooper. Thank you. Um, any debate? Nothing. Anyone like to? Would you like to speak to the motion? We went through it. I'll get you to turn your light on. So. Oh, so, sorry, I've got Councillor Cameron. We'll go first. Um, yeah. I just have a comment, and I was looking for it. That's hence my tardy pushing okay. of the light, but I can't see it in here. With regards to the length of the parks, and I think it mentioned, made a comment that if the parks weren't long enough, you know, they had to fit in, and if you had a long ute or whatever and overhung, you would be, would be exempted from a ticket. Is that correct? Have I read that correctly? There's some comment in there. I can't find it now. I'm looking for it. Something to do with the tow bar. Yeah, yes, yeah. I did read that as well. And then if you have, like, towing a caravan or towing a trailer, you take up two parks. You have to take up two. Is that right? You're allowed, it was around the area where they talked about six motorbikes in a park or... Oh. 6.5 on page 50 says no person may park in any vehicle in a parking place which is already um, occupied Madam by Chair. another vehicles, yes. Yes, it's called 7.2 oh, okay. <clears throat> on page 50. Thank you. Um, and so just, just to cl be clear on the um, intention, uh, if you're parking one vehicle, yes, and um, so that any part of that vehicle, including a tow bar, extends outside the space, um, that's not permitted. Um, and if um, parking places occupied by a vehicle or vehicle combination are metered parking spaces, the driver will be liable to pay a parking fee for each space. So I think if you've got a particularly long vehicle, we have the unfortunate experience of that the person who 
parks in front of you has an unfortunately long vehicle, uh, then you are at risk of a fine. Um, unless, of course, you're able to somehow pay. If it was metered, you could pay on the, the space behind you as well. May I comment? Yes. I recall a situation like this, which I think we've discussed around the table, where somebody had a particularly long vehicle and we had particularly short car parks. And I'm thinking on Moore Street outside Sparrows, there's a couple of shorter car parks and the vehicle was a ute, you know, twin cab sort of deal. And I think it got a fine for being over the car park, not a $12 fine, like a a $60 fine or something. So that is still, are, are we in future going to make sure our parking spaces are longer to accommodate our particular vehicles that roam around the town? Or uh, is that just something that people are going to have to suck up? I'll go to Hamish. Uh, we can't predict the length of every vehicle that might potentially want to park. So there is no way we can accommodate um, long enough parks for every potential vehicle. So we, we the, the, the parks will be what they will be if a long vehicle um, wants to use them. It can't overhang or, or it shouldn't use that park and needs to find a double park somewhere where it is permitted to overhang as long as uh, the driver is aware it's occupying two parks and needs to be and uh, needs to treat yes. both of them the same way. And I think this particular situation, the driver was not in one vehicle and it was a pretty common garden sort of twin cab deal. Well, well, then that park is not suitable for that vehicle. That is correct. Yeah. So our parking is of a standard length through the chair. I'll go to Jane. Yes. I think they do vary, but generally they're standard. With people with longer vehicles, they're better off using those angle parks in yeah. Burnett and Tancred because yeah. they're quite a bit longer. And mm. I've noticed people with larger vehicles are using those where possible. Yes, OK. And one sort of comment extra, and then I'll put my light off. Trailers, people towing trailers, what's the deal with that? They hire two, they pay for two spaces, or they move to the West Street centre area, or what is the deal with that? Just that, exactly that. They that's, still have okay, to park that's legally. correct. They're allowed to park legally over two spaces or whatever. Uh, yes, but okay. remembering if it was, say, a metered park, they would have to um, pay two be legal yeah, and for two yeah. spaces. Yeah. Or not pay, as the case may be, in our, in our CBD. Okay. Correct. Thank you. We... Here. So uh, oh. that just raises another question. Yeah. If, so if they don't pay and they're over two parks, they have to move on? If they don't pay and they're over two parks? Because oh, we don't have paid parking in the CBD, so they're over two parks. They'd get two fines if they overstayed, I'm, I'm guessing. Yes, they've, they've got to be legal in both parks, put it that way. So if, that's a, if, there's, if, if there's a restricted parking time, they can't uncouple the trailer and drive off no, somewhere. No, I'm talking about the long vehicle. Oh. The long twin They have cab. to be legal for the whole length of the whole thing. So they're legal, but someone sneaks in behind them. Yeah. I think. I don't, I don't, understand. I don't we, understand. We've had a, a, a mover and no, a second. We haven't, we haven't had a mover. Yes, we have for um, this recommendation. So. I'll follow that up offline with Jane. Yeah, that may be a good idea. Um, Councillor Lovett, we are in debate mode, so. Okay, yeah, because I was just um, following on from Carol and whether, you know, I'd, I'd like to see some notices put round town because at the moment there is a few camper vans parking up East Street and around that are uh, one and a half parks, so I guess they will end up having a fine and it'll be all over the Facebook page. No, they are able to occupy two parks, they just must do so legally, so... If there's a time restriction on the parks, then they have to leave both parks. If there is a meter there, they have to leave within the time that they're legally uh, obliged to. Otherwise, they're committing an offence over both parks. So but they, they are allowed to park over two parks. They are. OK. Yeah, that's what this, yep. As I understand, that's what Clause 7.2 yep. is saying. OK, so we do have a mover and a seconder. Um, would you like oh, to speak just, to the motion? I just got a... Got a um, not, not a question, but... No, I'm, we're not in question okay, time. Sorry. Okay, I'll put the motion then. All those in favour say aye. aye. Against, no. Carried. Thank you. Right, uh, next we have the HH wet. Thank you, Richard. The HH wet leases. Um, and Councillor Cameron has declared an interest in this. So we'll um, just... just 
move away from the table or from the microphone. Um, and we've got Renee and Tanya here to go through this. So um, the recommendation has, has three parts of the three different leases. Um, would you like to add to anything in the report? Happy with that? No? Any questions? For either Renee or Tania. Councillor Lover. I'm just going to ask a question. In the past, we've actually had them come in to talk to us and on, you know, once a year, whatever about this project and how it's tracking, and that will they always see them at council around here presenting, you know, sort of what they're up to and how it's, you know, yeah, how it's going. If, that, if it's council's wish that we invite them to a future council meeting, we will do so. And, yeah. and I think Philip has just mentioned maybe August that's, um, that's good. council meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions regarding this? No? No. That's all good. Um, okay, so we have the... Is everyone happy to take um, the recommendations as a whole part instead of three separate? Happy with that? Yep. Do I have a mover and a seconder? Councillor Ellis. Happy to move, Madam Chair. Councillor Hooper. Second. Thank you. You need debate. <coughs> Councillor Wilson. Um, I speak in support of this. Um, it's a community trust which is working for the betterment of water supplies and environmental enhancement in the whole, all of the Hines Yako Plains. Any other speakers for or against? Councillor, I'm, uh, also Councillor Brum. Mm. I'm also in favour of that um, as the recommendations. It's been working quite well up till now. Great. Okay. Councillor Ellis, would you like to speak or write a reply? Um, and this is also putting to use some land that ha doesn't have a lot of other use, and if they're going to enhance it as well, I think it's a win-win for everyone. So um, they're doing a lot of good work, so you support this. Thank you. Um, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Against, no. Carried. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Racing through. Right. Um, our next item is on page 98. And reserves and memorial hall boards triennial appointments. Anne, um, welcome. So we have got the report there and um, the final appointments for the last three um, boards to have their triennial meetings. Is there anything you'd like to add, Anne? No. Any questions? <laughs> Councillor Wilson. And the, the, with the three reserve boards we're talking about, Rakaia, Mayfield, and Chertsey, um, the, this appears to be a good list of names there. Is that, you know, is that been common across the, the boards you're seeing? Yes, but Chertsey, I was a wee bit disappointed with. I thought we might have got a few more, but we've got some really good people still on there, so I think we'll be fine. Um, I've just got a question. With the Mayfield Memorial Hall and Reserve Board, they don't have a secretary. Is that because you assume the role of secretary? Thank you. Uh, we have the recommendation there, um, two parts, that we receive the report and that we approve the appointments submitted by each of the boards as detailed in this report. Do I have someone to move? Councillor Lovett? I'd like to move it. Seemed two of them are my reserve boards and it was a mission trying to get the Chertsey one finally to have a meeting and um, hopefully we can yeah, move forward with a few issues on that one. Thank you. Councillor Cameron, would you like to second? Thank you. Any debate? None. Thank you. I'll put the motion. Um, all those in favour say aye. Yeah. Against, no. Carried. Thank you, Anne. Oh. 
Our next item is on page 102, and it's the appointment of alternate local controller and alternate recovery manager um, for civil defence. Um, we've got Jane up here. Um, we've got a recommendation there. Any questions first? None. Anything else to add, Jane? No, thank you, Madam no. Chair. Um, and I'm guessing this is just a good backup, just in case. Um, yes, yeah. Just the, the the more people we've got trained up, the better. And that's a big role, the recovery manager, to have just one person. So this will improve that and take some of the pressure off Tony Durham, hopefully. Thank you. Any further questions? If not. Someone like to move, and I'll read the recommendation that Council appoints Shireen Crossafiani as alternate local controller and alternate local recovery manager, and Jim Henderson as alternate local recovery manager. Do I have a mover? Councillor Brahm? That's correct. And Councillor Todd, second. Any debate? I support this. I think it's 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 good to have all our ducks in a row. We're seeing um, civil defence emergencies happen throughout New Zealand almost on a regular basis at the moment. Um, and yeah, I think we've got some good staff in here, so that's great. Um, any, any more speakers for or against? No? I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Okay, it's no carried. Thanks, Jane. Right. Our next uh, next item is item number thirteen, submission to Waka Kotahi on bilingual signs, and the report starts on page one oh six. And we've got a recommendation there. Welcome Tony and Mark up. Uh, any questions on the submission? I probably have one first. So um, we have got a couple of bilingual signs that are already up, and I've noticed a couple around the schools which just have school kura. So they've obviously been put up um, as needed. Is that correct, or as as replacement signs? Is that is that how the signs work? Uh, yeah, yes, it's going through it as replacement, but the signs that are going up are the new school speed limits that are um, being put. They have uh, gone up a bit prematurely. They haven't actually been certified by Wakatai in the register yet, so uh, some of the ones that are up will be put a cover over them until the 17th of July with the start of the next term. Uh, but they're a sign that's already uh, bilingual. Kura school signs have been around for quite a while, so they're just new signs as part of those new speed limits. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Um, Councillor Cameron. Um, I'm looking at Appendix 2, Annex 1, Destination Signs, page uh, page 112. Okay. Yep. Current, which is clearly not bilingual. Welcome to Christchurch. And then we've got um, Haramai Ki Otatahi. Um, welcome to Christchurch. And then we've got Haramai Ki, Welcome to Wellington. Um do you get to choose which option, or how does that work? Because it looks to be two options there. N no, they're a bit different. So one has the Maori yeah, name for Christchurch, and one doesn't one have the Maori the, name for the town. The, the Maori greeting. They both have Maori greetings, and one has Welcome to Christchurch, and the Maori name of Christchurch, and one has Welcome to Wellington, no yep. Maori name. Yeah. How does it work with the two options? Good question. Yeah. What was that? So through the chair, so we actually don't know the difference in the size, but um, Mark just made a good point, perhaps it's to do with the size of the name and fitting everything on. What was it, my it, 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 and it appears that the Wellington one is not bilingual. I no. think that's the point. Is there a choice between yeah, it's just got the bilingual the and greeting. the not? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And it's under the proposed option, so I'm just trying to work out how it works. I assume that's that's the case, and that's the decision we'd make when we want to put the signs up on which way council wants to go. I would, I would Is this just a cut and paste from the 
submission document. Yes, you know, the document you received. For the chair, yes, it is. Just so it looks like a choice thing, doesn't An it? example of, of this is what the, the consultation document is out and asking and, us. And I noticed in our submission, we're commenting with interest how it's interesting to have the colour scheme. I thought that was an interesting comment. Tell me what is interesting about the colour scheme. Does that vary from our current colours? We've got yellow on them. It's currently here. Where you are. Uh, through the chair, that was just commenting on the fact that they've actually talked to optometrists around what's the right colour blend to have to make sure that people can can understand what the most prominent and pressing message is on a sign. Um, they're just taking that approach that was quite scientific. And but that looks the same as the current colours. I think it's to do with the colour, the differentiation with the Māori language as well as the the Oh, English. the Māori language is in yellow, is that right? Yes. Gotcha. I see. Councillor Todd. I think, Madam Chair, the question I get asked quite a lot is with this signage, um, why uh, is Maori first and English underneath and not the other way around? Can anyone answer that question? Go to Tony. Through the chair, no, I don't know why, but we could ask that in our submission if you'd like. Yeah. I think uh, when you look at um, page 125 and um, the signage that says uh, motorway ends. If you're driving down the motorway at 100 k an hour, it might, it's going to be very difficult to see the English uh, version of that, uh, that sign. Just because the um, motorway ends is in smaller yeah. lettering, is that yeah. what you're saying? To fill it, fit in, I suppose. Just as a, well, I suppose, general comment, like when anyone reads anything, they always start at the top and work down. And if you're driving a car, um, at speed, people are going to be slowing down to see the English version. Mm. And uh, that could cause a problem. I just wonder the reason why the wording is in the way it is. Mm. Who, who made that decision? Waka Katahi would have made that decision um, with the Māori Advisory Board that they've worked with to develop these signs. But that's where we can provide feedback in a submission if you wish. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Hooper. Thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, mine follows on from Tony's. I, although I quite like the, the yellow and the white and think that we'll get used to looking for the white if that's the way we want to go with the English, I wonder if you could also ask Waka Kotahi if they believe it's safer maybe to have English above the Te Reo. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I, I, we can do, I'll do whatever you want me to do in the submission. So if as a council you'd like that point made, I'm happy to make that happen. Yeah, this, this, is, this is where we would look for the direction of council. Yep. So one councillor making a comment and everyone else reading their tablet doesn't give us a clear view whether that's council's will or not. And uh, if you wish to test the will of council, the, by far the best way to do that is to... Um, propose a motion uh, and while we don't necessarily need to vote on every single thing, um, it's very hard for us to know whether that last comment, for example, has favour around the table uh, or whether it's you know one person's um, comment. So we, we, would, we would look to have a clearer steer from the council as a whole uh, to some of these things if that's okay. possible. Yep. So we'll wait for, we'll, we'll do our rounds of questions and then if someone wants to to move something to that effect, they can. Councillor Wilson. Um, I, I congratulate staff on coming up with this this um, submission, but I, I still understand how difficult it is to to get a position. How did you come to a position on, you know, because there's so many, everybody has a, such a huge difference of opinions on every single one of these contexts. How did you come up with the, your tone or the feeling of the submission? Hamish? Uh, uh, all, all staff ever do is put forward advice to the council to consider. So the, the process that we might follow to um, recommend, uh, I, I don't think is hugely, hugely relevant, to, to, to be honest. Like, in the end, if council agrees with the recommendation, then you should pass it. If you disagree, then you should propose something else. Well, all we've tried to do is, you know, put, it, put a best foot forward 
uh, from uh, whatever information we have at hand and the reading we do and the conversations we have and put the best foot forward. But but in the end, um, council needs to decide whether to accept that advice or not. Yeah, thank you. And we in in our recommendation that we have here. Um, says that, so I'll go to Councillor Lovett. We're still on question yeah, time. Was, yeah, I was just going to say, um, yeah, I, I sort of agree with Tony here. Questions? Um, the question is, you know, I think we should submit on th these signs are getting very wordy and confusing, and we have a multicultural society, and when you're driving along the first, you know, we're taught to read from the top down, and I think English has to be at the top, so is that a question? Well, I'm just trying to say. Okay, can we're, we're can going. We let's do questions first. And sort of doing that. Um, yeah, Let, let's go through questions first, because I um, and then if someone wants to move a motion, um, which is different to what we have on page 106, we can go from there. But I think we'll just stick to questions first. Councillor Todd. Um, the other thing we uh, talked about was speed around um, schools. And um, as we at our meetings, we've agreed that the uh, signage around the schools shall be 30k 24/7. Uh, but when you look at page 121, um, the suggested rule uh, has a half hour speed of 30k's in the morning and a half hour in the afternoon, which goes against what we um, uh, what we uh, agreed to do. I'm in favour of the sign because I spoke against the. 24-7 sign, so I see this as a plus from my point of view. So, the, so is the sign correct was my yeah. question. So that's a variable sign. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a static sign associated with electronic variable speed limit signs. So that's for the minor side road, for example, at um, Long, Long Beach School or Longview School. Uh, Long the, the, down there, the 30k variable speed limit has got electronic signs. On two of the side roads, the minor side roads, these are the signs you put out there rather than the electronic signs. And that's just uh, in, in cases where you've got a main road and a very minor road with a giveaway or stop control on it, you have that sign on rather than the electronic sign. So that's why they're in place. It's just um, a, a lower cost way of doing it, but not having a full electronic sign on a very low volume side road. It's not, um, those signs aren't intended for the 30, the permanent, or so the speed limits we have on urban schools. and to be up as permanent variable signs, if you know what I mean. They're not supposed to be static signs, and they either have a permanent or you have the electronic variable. And in most urban situations, you would have those electronic signs on all the roads just because of the traffic volumes on them. You wouldn't have such a minor side road that you wouldn't have it on. So, so that particular sign relates to where there's electronic variable signs on the main road, and this is on the side road only. Yep, you're clear Which on that. Which is a long explanation for something yep. like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can show you a map if you like. Thank you. Oh, where they apply. Yeah. yeah. No, that's good. Thank you. Um, Councillor Mackle. Oh, I was just wondering if there's been any surveys or stuff done with uh, in the way of tourists with uh, two different languages on a sign and how confusing that would be for them expecting to see an, an English speaking country as such. Uh, through the chair, probably not a survey of New Zealand tourists as such, but certainly internationally there's many, many countries that have bilingual signage. Um, I can think of Wales and Ireland just off the top of my head. Um, sorry? In Canada. So bilingual signage isn't um, a new phenomenon at all. Um, in terms of how uh, the research has indicated an eye reads the sign, um, yes, we're all taught to read top down, left to right in English language. However, your eye is drawn to what you understand. And so if you can't understand the Māori, you automatically your eye will drop down to the English version. So um, from a research perspective, I found that bilingual signage doesn't result in increased crashes um, and it doesn't result in any road sl like slowing down of speeds um, in a noticeable way. And I did hear on the news the other day that New Zealand's one of the only three countries in the world that doesn't have road signs in an Indigenous language. So... I think the majority do around the world. No more questions, uh, Councillor Hooper. Uh, you know, mine's not a question, and I agree with what Tony said. 1991, I was driving around Wales and enjoying having a crack at some of the Gaelic pronunciations. So, um, yep, not a problem. But the feedback I've received, talk it up Tuesdays in the uh, library, has been around safety. 
So I think I'd like to gauge the feeling of council and whether or not we should be asking the question of Waka Kotahi what research has been done and yep the eye may be drawn to the the English if that's your slant but I'm wondering what those microseconds are that it takes <coughs> to do that and whether or not that's enough to have a crash so I'd like to move that we include in our submission a question around safety with Toreo going first ahead of English on the signs. So we need to um, approve the submission first, so we need a mover um, for the proposed draft submission, and then do we need to... Um, no, I think if Councillor Hooper was wishing to move a motion that incorporated his addition, or okay. he, he could move that, but I just think the motion that he's put may be better placed after a decision to, to make a submission for a start. So, so we do move that we... Uh, so that's approved the proposed draft submission. Which is not doing. No. Proposing an amended draft. Yes. Right. Okay, I, I, sorry, I'm confused. So. My, my understanding is that the councillor is uh, moving to adopt an amended submission um, based on this draft, but with the addition of a question around um, safety. Yes. Okay. Got that. So, yeah. So, do I have a seconder for that, Councillor Cameron? Well, I wanted to add something to that as well to the draft submission. Okay. Well, oh, so this is the only opportunity because I didn't have a question. I had something I wanted to add to the draft. So it's just adding something to the draft. Can't we just add things to the draft as we go along? Y yes, you can. But we, we've we've got to continue to get clarity as to what people are are moving. So. As I understand it, we've now got a motion that approves this draft with with the additional question in the submission as to what research has Wakutahi done to be satisfied that putting the Tareo first is not compromising safety. Everything else in the submission is as, it, as it's written. That's what I understand the motion to be. So if you have a further amendment... Yes, I do. ..then that's what you need to signal rather than... Uh, any other and process. how do I do the signalling? Do I do an unusual cry or do I put my hand up or do a dance? <laughs> you you could say you'd like to move a further <laughs> amendment. Yeah. So I'd like to move a further <laughs> amendment, please, okay. Madam Chair. Yeah. When I look at the pictures and you go to Annex 1, Annex 2, Annex 2, public and active transport signs, I personally find, and it's related to the safety issue, that the colour, the change in colour is easier to read than the black, you know, are a, um, are a line. They're the same um, colour and same font and same size as the non-Māori versus the Māori, you know, they're both the same. Whereas when you go up, for example, and indeed below, they've got different colours. And if you go down below, they've got blue, you know, the, the forey for Wananga for the university, and then university in blue and the other in black. You know, that's easier to read. I would like that in the submission, that Annex 2 is of the same sort of, you know, something a little bit different, because it's quite confusing when you look at, example, um, one of the bus things that said something. That was so right. I need, we need, Could, you need to would, would move it, would it, would it, um, that would, would, would it Would it satisfy your intention if the further amendment was to take into account Councillor Hooper's point? Plus to add a further point to the submission that uh, that this council believes that all bilingual signs should have the trail and the Maori in a different colour. Yes. Yes, yes, or different. Yes, something different, different font or a different colour or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. That would satisfy me. Thank you, so, Mr. Chief. So can we add that to? Yeah. If so now you've got that further, so that needs to be said. So that I, needs I to be seconded. I don't think we had a seconder to the no, first one. No, we haven't one. got a seconder. So if, if, if Councillor Hooper was happy to add Carolyn's second part, I would be happy then to second yes, I, that I motion if Councillor Hooper was happy. I'll go to Philippa. Well, Philippa's I was just going stuff. to point out that a seconder hadn't been received. No, after, yeah. But I would like um, the mover and the seconder to make it very clear verbally on what they're moving and seconding. Okay. I'm going to 
I'm going to go back to the mover, Councillor Cameron, if that's okay. And you need to put your light on. We seem to be all over the show, so let's get this on the right lane and get going. Ara, the right lane. So I would like to move in addition that Waka Kotahi is, um, is asked about safety or what considerations to safety they have included with Toreo being first on the signs. And, and the colours of the... Colours or font. So it doesn't feel like it's very clear, sorry. I, I, do, th I do think we understand the intent. I understand the intention, but I'm just thinking about when this recommendation um, is written up. So we've got here that Council approves the proposed draft submission to Waka Kotahi on the draft land transport rule, traffic control devices, bilingual signs, Amendment 2023. Do we want to include any of that in the original recommendation and then add on to that um, that we ask? Yes, I, I think we're clearly moving that, with yes. the, but the amended, as opposed to the recommendation, is with the inclusion of a question of, of Waka Katahi as to what safety yes. uh, research Correct. they so have done it, around yes. Terea. It would just first. go in amongst the key points, wouldn't it? And secondly, uh, um, uh, that this council believes that in all cases Toreo and English should be in either a different colour or yes. font. Yes. So everyone's clear on, on that recommendation. And I have a mover. Councillor Hooper, I have a seconder. Councillor Ellis. Any debate? Councillor Wilson. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I speak, I'm not in favour of the submission, it's nothing personal against the submitters or anybody at the council, but I feel that this, this um, by having a submission process on this thing, it is actually causing a lot of damage to our society, when the natural progression of signs and names will happen over time, once I know Otapoti Dunedin, that's fine, because that's what we're learning to call it, but this is being force fed on us a society and it's going to cause division so I'm, I, I would speak against submitting because I blink, believe it's a it's a bad thing for our society to be doing at this time. Thank you. Any other speakers for or against? I'd like to speak for and I think in point number six on page 110 um, says it all, normalising the use of te reo Māori in our society is key. Um, I think people's eyes will go to the words that they know and then they will start learning some new words. So I am in support of this motion. Councillor Brahm. And I'm the same. I'm in favour of what we did up till now. Um, I'm coming from a country with dialects and it's quite easy. You just pick up the words you understand and you can find out where you're going. Any other speakers? Councillor Hooper, right of reply? Yeah, I'd like to speak to the motion. Um, yeah, I'm in favour of it as well, um, but that is the feedback that I've had from, from the ratepayers, so I think it would be wrong not to ask the question on their behalf. Thank you. So I've put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Against? No. Carried. Would you like your... Vote recorded? No. Okay, thank you. And sorry if that was all confusing, but we got there in the end. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Tony. Um, next, we have standing orders. And Philippa, you'll speak to this. Um, I can answer some questions if anyone has any. Yeah, thank you. Uh, call for questions first. Councillor Cameron. The recommendation, a casting vote for chairpersons, yes. What was the prior, what was the prior recommendation? Or has it always been there? I just wonder why that is put in there as a recommendation. So that's a good question because it is reflecting LGNZ's template for the recommendation, but 
previously council has had a casting vote and the resolution has just simply shown and in, in I can't remember the recommendation from last time but it was confirming that a casting vote was available. Those three options in the recommendation are the three that are discretionary so councils can either choose two or not have any or each of them. When I did a bit of a Google, can I comment now or do you want me to wait for when I did my Google? It's sort of a sort of wait, a question. Wait, it's a wee bit debate. of a question though, Madam Chair. Let's make make it a ask a question. I have had done a little bit of research and there are various positions on the casting vote issue. One position is you maintain the status quo. The other position is you, if it's this is not a, a strong determination of council if you have to use a counseling, casting vote and so you put it on the table and you have another chat or another read or people have an opportunity to rethink their position, position two, and position three is the chair has the casting vote. That, that's what I have understood from chair, you know, from, from in this situation. Have I got that correct? It is a view, but it's simply not true that okay. the status quo is retained sure. on a casting vote. A casting vote can be the way that the chair yeah. wishes to move. And so that, that person can have a deliberative vote and vote one way and use the casting vote to vote another way if they so choose. Mm -hmm. But there is no expectation or requirement that they sure. maintain the status quo. And what about if the decision is so close it's not a genuine decision because a casting vote is required? Well, Madam Man, that's what the casting vote is actually yeah, for, to yeah. um, break a deadlock and make it, have a decision made. So it's always going to be close if, sure. if a casting I vote mean, is I mean, I'm just commenting and questioning on what I've read around that, mm. that deadlock sort of situation. Thank you. Um, just a question, how often has a casting vote, vote been used at our council? Um, in this term of council once. Mm. In the previous term... Not very often, I, I can't remember the numbers, and possibly going back another term multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. Councillor Lovett. I was just on the documents, <clears throat> going down page 139, 12.4 and 18.5, we talk about the public may record hui. Um, it's the only... Chair, I was just wondering, could we have meeting beside it? Because the whole thing is in English. And just to make sense, whether you had meeting beside it in brackets beside Hui, when you sort of, we use starting to use just random words through documents. And I know, I know some people don't know the trio and uh, it's just my thought. Madam Chair, this is an extract from the Local Government New Zealand's um, document highlighting the changes. So they have written it in the manner in which they see fit, and we've just repeated it here for your information. So I don't think it's open to us to Ch amend their, um, yeah. their language. It's here for your um, understanding. Right, any further questions? If not, we have a recommendation on page 134, and I'll read it, that Council adopts the 2023 standing orders for the conduct of its meetings and those of its committees with the following amendments. One, provisions for meetings by audiovisual link, yes. Two, a casting vote for chairpersons, yes. Three, option B, less formal as the default for speaking and moving motions. Do I have someone who would like to move that? Councillor Ellis and a seconder, Councillor Brahm. Thank you. Thank you. Any debate? No, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Against, no. Carried. Thank you. Uh, next is the Code of Conduct 2023, item number 15, and that's on page 141. And again, any questions on this? Councillor Wilson. Um, I'm just bring just bear with me while I bring it up. It's it's in page 
12 of the code of conduct explained in the, the appendices. It's, a, it's when, when we um, define Te Tiriti o Waitangi, um, can you, th does that include all aspects of the treaty, English and the Maori version as well? That's the question I'm asking. So that it's, you know, because the, the whole thing is, the two versions are slightly different and they have different meanings to different people. And when we do it, we define using both versions as the, is, is that what that means by that? Who would like to answer that question? Tony? Oh, so it's in, um, we've got another yeah, document on the Code of Conduct. Just get opened up, sorry. And it's on page 12, so it's not on that one, it's on. No, it's this here. Um, it's on this one. So it's the Elected Members Code of Conduct. Um, standalone doc document that we have in Stella, and it's on page 12. And it's, we have the definitions, and then number two is Te Tiriti or Waitangi. Sorry, Tony. Thank you, through the Chair. Uh, I think from memory we had this discussion at the workshop. Um, this is the definition that's come from LGNZ, as I understand it. Um, so we've just taken that as the the source of, of, of truth for this um, and pulled it in, given LGNZ's expertise in the Code of Conduct space. Thank you. Any other questions? Go back to the original agenda. No, if not, there is a recommendation there that says that Council adopts the Elected Members Code of Conduct 2023. Um, a mover, Councillor Hooper? Yep. Do I have a seconder? Seconder. Councillor Brahm? Any debate? And I note that this will go to the community, Methven Community Board. There will be a separate set of standing orders and code of conduct for the board, um, very much along the lines of this one, if they right. choose to adopt it. Thank you. Okay, any debate? Would you like to speak to the motion, Councillor Hooper? No. Okay, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Against, no. <coughs> Carried. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Tony. Uh, next item is item number 16, financial reports. got Erin here, and we've got the variance report, um, <coughs> which we will we'll go through very slowly. Page 148. Page 148. <laughs> um, I'm just thinking now, now I've got number three, and num so my numbers are going to be different because I've had it printed out. So, pay, um, any questions on page 148? 149? 150? Councillor Cameron. Um, just on, go back to 148, please, Madam Chair. Can someone just explain to me that capital income line? Because if I'm correct, we've got another two... This is to May, isn't it? So there's another two months. One month. in. OK, one year. Yeah, that's right, June. Yeah. Um, what's that five, what is that capital income? Is it, was that shovel ready or something? Was it um, through the chair, uh, that is where when we raise loans or um, move revenue through for funding of projects, that's our capital income line, and that's populated as part of our year-end processes. So we can't do that during the year because this project's not finished and we have to wait. So you wait till end it's, of June. it's part of our year year end process. So okay. the draft that come, will come through for June uh, is highly likely that that will still be sitting around about that um, five percent mark. Okay. So the five percent that's there is gain on sales and things that have come through through capital income. Thank you. Is what on sales? Gains on sales. So the money above what's cost to sell an item. Like, oh, gains on sales. Big pun. Just in here. Very well. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Um, it's with, with regards to road and operating income and operating expenditure. On page? On page 150. Yep. I do recognise that, that we are pretty much, we're slightly over budget and the explanatory note is to do with the flooding and the extra money we received back for that flooding. But I still want to, to 
raised the point that, and that even though the, the budget is correct, the budget and the, the amount of work getting done are disconnected because of the huge inflation that we're facing in our road and costs. Is that, is that correct? <laughs> That's correct, uh, through the chair. Um, yeah. We do not get um, escalation costs um, without, through our funding uh, from Waka Katai. Thank you. Um, go through page 151, 152, 150, 157-158-159-160-161 162, 163, Councillor Cameron. I'm going back to um, the explanation on page 155. Reason for variance is the favourable variance in the wastewater um, because of the development contributions being higher than projected. Um, and I'm assuming that that's because we've had a lot of development. Is that correct? Neil's, Neil's nodding. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yep. So then would we have an adjustment in subsequent years of the development go reduces, presumably? Uh, that just so reflects that the amount of... Forecast, would, would just, it's just a reflection on the amount of development and then the yeah. contributions we receive gets kept um, for uh, um, projects that have um, an additional Water capacity um, yeah. element to them going forward. Okay. So next year the budget, or would there be, a, is there a budget for that? You know, no, not for development contributions. No, it's, it's no. sort of kept as a fund to fund okay. additional um, right, capacity right, projects Thank in the future. You. Councillor Ellis, what page are you on? 163, Madam Chair. 163. And a similar sort of question. We have a favourable variance there of um, quite a bit of money. How does that reflect going forward? Um, because we budget X amount to run um, those services, and then when we have a favourable variance, what, what happens to that extra money? I... Leanne? Through the Chair, so, can I just clarify the question? You're talking about in the recreation facilities and yes. services? Yes. So we're showing that we haven't spent as much as we would typically spend. Mm -hmm. That will then hit the reserves if we're not requesting to carry it forward. So it goes into a different pot. Correct. That's right. That, that answer is correct. To, to, for completeness, though, of course, one of the reasons that we've been managing the cost so carefully in this cost centre is because revenue is down as well. Yes. Yes. So, so there may, the amount that might transfer through would be dependent on unders and overs as opposed to just a saving on OPEX. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, one, six, four. 165, 166, 167, 168, 169, 170, 171, 172, Community Governance, 173, 174, 175, 176, 177, 178, 179, 
and we're on the balance sheet 180. Keep going, 181, net debt and borrowings. One eight two. One eight three council investments. One eight four receivable summary. One eight five. Done. All right. So we just need to move that council receives a financial variance report for May 2023 to have someone that would like to move that I'll second it uh, you're moving that councillor Lovett and councillor Todd seconding all those in favour say aye against no carried thank you all right um, thank you Erin we now have uh, the mayor's report on uh, item number 17 on page 186. Any questions on that report? We will um, go through the remits in a moment. Councillor yeah, Wilson? Um, I'd just like to make a comment on the Stakely Ice Rink. I was up at the, the, the sponsor's day and it's amazing. I, I think there was a huge amount of people there, but 99% of them probably weren't they could skate, but I'm sure a lot wouldn't want to have gone out skating. So it shows how much community support we have for some of these projects, no matter how big they are. 1.4 million is a huge amount of money to be gained out of our community. Thank you. Yes, and it was a um, it was sort of the official opening, but they're waiting on um, some sort of technical. Um, bits and pieces before they can actually um, open the um, ice skating rink, but it, it did show just um, the incredible amount of support that the ice rinks had. Um, there were there was probably two, maybe three hundred people there um, for the night, so it was excellent. Um, we also had the visit um, to Environment Canterbury last week, um, which was good for the councillors that could make it, um, and. Mayor's Task Force for Jobs. I don't know, Hamish, if you want to make any comment on that, but it um, seems to be going extremely well. No, it, it, um, through Madam Chair, it is going extremely well, and we've been delighted with the number of um, uh, people we can get uh, into work through that um, scheme. Uh, and um, the government has, has announced that funding will continue for the next two years, and I know the steering um, committee is currently... Uh, uh, confirming which councils will get uh, which funding uh, commitments over the coming year in order to continue the program. Uh, we, like many councils, um, will be funded uh, to the tune of $325,000 for the year ahead. That's up from the 108, I think, that we've had for the pilot. Um, so uh, there's obviously um, some increased um, resource there mm. and to enable us to get even more uh, uh, people um, into work, so the scheme's going from strength to strength and um, is a joy to be part of, to be mm. fair. And I think it shows here saying they, we have currently, we currently have 62 employers engaged, which is excellent, so that just means that yeah. there's 60 through, 62 businesses out there in the Ashburton district who are willing to um, take on some extra employees, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, yeah, really good. Um, we have the LDNZ AGM um, coming up in July, which is um, around the same time as the, the conference, and there are 11 remits there um, that we have... Um, uh, yeah, so we have 11 remits that have been proposed. Um, Ultimately, it's the mayor who um, votes on those at the um, AGM, but like we have done in the past, maybe we'll just go through each one, and if there's something that, um, I mean, all we can do is indicate to the mayor whether 
we think they're a good idea or not, um, there won't be sort of any recommendations, it will just be um, indication. Um, so we'll go through, Councillor Cameron, did you have another question or was your no, question on the remits? I, I think I will go through one okay, by one. So we yep. put a light on after each one. Yes, okay. yes. So I'll just um, say which number and, and the, um, the name of the remit and then if there's anything that you'd like to speak in support or against, um, then that can just be noted. So there is a separate attachment with sort of a lot. This is, this is sort of the, the preview, I suppose, um, of them, so um, you can read. But um, the first one is allocation of risk and liability in the building sector. Any comments anyone would like to make or happy with that very much? Yep. Uh, number two is regarding the rates rebate. Councillor Cameron. Um, when I read, now I've just gone out now to look at the full resolution, but I'll go back to the short one. When I read the remit, it talks about uplifting the income. Is it back the front? or have I, um, Because I think we're trying to say you can... You people on a lower income, you know, on a higher income, can apply for a rates rebate because the rates, the threshold is very low. It's got raise the income threshold for rates rebate eligibility. Uh, oh yeah, so that would make it like fifty thousand instead of forty, and you can still apply. Yeah. Yes, without the forty and the fifty being the right yeah. numbers, but yeah. it's it's to make more people totally um, support that. Yeah, uh, access the rebate. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Totally support that. And, and when um, these these rebates are obviously, uh, sorry, these remits are obviously um, sp spoken to at the AGM, so there's usually a bit of background um, mm. regarding those as well. Okay, so everyone's happy with yeah. that. Um, Councillor Todd? Um, should that we be saying that should be inflation adjusted as well? Right. Uh, says no, adjust the rebate amount in line with inflation and the cost of living, so yeah, that it's may, okay. yeah, it's probably covered in there. Yep, yep. yep. Strongly okay. in favour. Yes, I think, yep, so good. Uh, number three, roading transport <laughs> maintenance funding. Councillor Cameron. If this was a quiz and you had to choose around with double points, <laughs> this would I would like the Mayor to consider this the double point round. Uh, this is this is um really important I think for our yep. district. Yeah. Yep. And and there are some other mayors who are doing a lot of work in this um, space as well. Um yeah. Hamish. Um through Madam Chair, th this is a um, New Zealand wide issue. It's well known by uh, every political party. Um, there's no, there's no. Um, we're not trying to fill an information gap here. Um, we're trying to persuade uh, for some actual action, and it's a continuation of the uh, advocacy program that LGNZ and many mayors already undertake. So it's just to continue that momentum and pressure on the insufficient funding. Thank you. Um, number four is local election accessibility. Councillor Todd. Uh, Madam Chair, I agree with this. If it's good enough for central government, it should be good enough for local <laughs> government as well. You're right. Thank you. Um, number five, ability for co-chairs at formal meetings. Councillor Todd. So just a question, co-chairs, are they elected to council or are they, would these, these be appointed outside of council? I'm just looking at the actual remit. The, the chair would have to be a member of the council. If your question is more about how those people might be around the council table, uh, then it would be whatever mechanism they uh, are entitled to be there. But the idea of this remit is around um, allowing those councils and committees who wish to have a co-chair to be able to do that. So that co-chair would still be a council member? So I don't think so. So that co-chair would still be a council member? Like for the lights. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm, I was trying to yep, read sorry. that. Um, Councillor Todd, I'll come back to you when you can put your light on again. Um, Councillor Wilson. It, I'm not in favour because I feel it's awfully complicated. We, if a council just if a council decides to have 
some um, Maori representatives on its council. That's great. It's their, their choice. But then each councillor should be treated equally, and you can only really have one chair, one because it makes it awfully difficult to chair things with two chairs and co-chairs. You have one chair, and that's a, just the fundamentals of a good meeting, and that's what a chair is there for. Okay. Councillor Ellis. Yeah, I, I believe audit and risk, um, you have the ability to appoint an external chair who's not a council member, I believe. Uh, in fact, that's recommended by the audit office, but they, uh, but those people, are the, the independents are a full member of the committee. So you would, mm. so as a member of the committee, they're entitled to be chair, the chair. How they get to the committee, in their case, they're appointed rather than elected, uh, is, a, is a, a background issue but they are full members and they could be appointed to the chair or indeed a co-chair if that option was available to you. Councillor Todd, did you want to go back to that question? Uh, well, I think it's been answered a bit here, uh, but I would be against the, this particular bit. Okay. So just, um, and all we're doing is, is indicating to the Mayor when he goes to vote. Um, so... <laughs> Who's, I suppose, who's not happy with this recommendation? Yeah. Okay, so mixed view. That's fine. I'll, I'll make a note of that. Thank you. Um, number six, parking infringement penalties. Uh, that's... Yep, agree with that. Um, number seven, rural and regional public transport. Carol, uh, Councillor Cameron. Vitally important for our community. Um, and we need to, we've sort of looked at various models around the country and they're all equally unaffordable or require strong support from regional council. So we need to have some way to ensure that we can have some sort of transportation. And at um, the welcoming new um, former refugees meeting we had, uh, you know, lunch we had here the other day, that was a big problem and spoken about by speakers that were former refugees. And uh, as we know, it's a big problem for, for a lot of our community. So I think that's really important. Thank you. Councillor Wilson. I, I recognise the need for extra rural and regional public transport, but I still believe that we have to be very careful that... Um, an uplift in all urban bus networks can cost an absolute fortune, whereas it should be the right public transport for the right place and the right cost. Because I note that the Timaru public transport at 2.7 million, it's probably just about equivalent to pay a taxi for everybody, so just without the subsidy, some of those ones don't actually work. So I think we need to be very careful that we don't go down the rabbit hole of it. It's only magically coming from nowhere. It still has to be funded somewhere. Fair enough. Thank you. Councillor Hooper. Thank you. I agree with both uh, Councillor Cameron and Wilson. Um, yeah, we need something, but I'm worried about cost. Also, one of the ECAN um, councillors urged me to have a look at the My Way in Timaru and, and was reasonably positive that there was a form of that that, that we could possibly latch on to. So maybe that would be a nice council outing. Yes, thank you. And it was mentioned at the the ECAM meeting the other day. Um, so, majority happy with this? Yes, thank you. Um, number eight, establishing resolution service. Councillor Cameron. Y yes, I think that's important. Yep. Yeah. Everyone else happy with that? Yeah, good. Uh, number nine, earthquake prone buildings. Councillor Cameron. Very important. Yep. Everyone, yep, happy with that. Uh, number 10, Kiwi Saver contributions for elected members. Uh, I, I think it's a very good idea. <laughs> for those of us who do qualify, <laughs> going ahead, um, everyone agrees on that. And number 11, um, the last one is audit New Zealand fees. Um, and I think that's probably... Uh, Councillor Cameron. How much are our fees approximately to the chairs? I think they're in the region of $140,000 a year. I'd have to just check the exact number, but... Yeah, but in that order... Without writing that down, that's, yeah, that's in that yeah. order. It's important, I think, for us all to remember that. It's a lot of money. Yeah. Councillor Wilson. Yep, audit's very, very important, but also the, the cost-benefit analysis of who you get, and we don't have a choice with Audit New Zealand, do we? Is that correct? So we're just paying... 
for something we don't have a choice for, which seems to be going up, and we need to be very careful. I think it was 135 or somewhere there. You had, so the numbers are around within the ballpark. Mm. So we all um, agree on that one as well. Great. So in the end, we can uh, let the mayor know that pretty much everything except for um, number five, which was sort of a mixed view, um, we were happy with. Great. Thank you for going through that one by one. Um, we have the mayor's calendar. Um, look pretty busy. Um, so I'll move that council receives the mayor's report. Do I have a seconder? Oh. Councillor Todd. Don't think there's any debate. All those in favour say aye. aye. Okay, it's no carried. Thank you. Um, we're a little bit ahead of time. Oh, okay, so we just have to wait um, for Katie to get here, so we will... Adjourn, uh, adjourn the yeah. So we will adjourn the meeting. Um, we have a um, few minutes before we have staff come over to welcome new staff and then we'll adjourn for afternoon tea anyway. So we'll wait for um, Katie to arrive. We'll adjourn the meeting. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Thank you.
Thank you and welcome back um, to the open part of the meeting. Um, we've got Katie Perry here who is um, going to introduce us to our new staff member for this meeting. I'll hand over to you, Katie. Uh, kia ora koutou. I am um, very pleased to introduce um, Neela Bingham. <laughs> she, um, Neela is our new graduate accountant. Um, Neela's appointment was extra special. She was actually Sharon Watson, our youth employment coach's 12th placement under the Merrill Task Force for Jobs Initiative. Um, so Neela had just finished her finance studies, which she'd completed online, um, when she connected with Sharon to help her navigate the job market. Sharon worked her magic and networks to secure Neela a job, a job sorry, um, in our council finance team. I'm sure you all join me in welcoming Neela to ADC. Okay. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Welcome, Neela, and um, hope you have a long and happy career with Ashburn District Council. Um, we are now going to break for afternoon tea, so welcome um, you to join us there, and you can tell us all about the um, Mayor's Task Force for Job recruitment process if you want to. Um, over a cuppa. Um, do we need to... Move it to public excluded now? Yes. yes. So um, when we come back, we will... Um, go straight into public excluded. So, Councillor Tob, would you like to move that we go into public excluded? Uh, Councillor Hooper, second. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Okay, it's no, thank you.